Hello, my name is Jim Verdon of the U.S. Geological Survey, an implementing partner of the Famine Early Warning Systems Network. A strong El Nino is ongoing and is forecast to continue three to six months into 2016. This El Nino has resulted in severe drought in Central America, the Caribbean, and Ethiopia. And over the coming three to six months, it will be the primary cause of flooding in the Horn of Africa and drought in Southern Africa. FuseNet has prepared this short video to present the latest information on this El Nino and its implications for food security across the 35 countries FuseNet covers. An El Nino is a set of anomalous oceanic and atmospheric conditions in the equatorial Pacific that influences climate all around the world. This figure shows the large area of much warmer than average sea surface temperatures extending from the Central Pacific Ocean to South America, with concurrent cooler than average conditions in the vicinity of Indonesia. At the same time, a weakening of trade winds that blow from east to west must occur in order for the declaration of an El Nino to be made. As you can see by comparing the red upward spikes in this figure, current sea surface temperatures are approaching those observed in 1997-1998, the strongest El Nino since 1950. Temperatures have not yet peaked in the eastern Pacific. The blue drops on the graph are associated with La Nina events, which drive a different global pattern. We will discuss that later. The current forecast for this El Nino is for sea surface temperatures to peak around the new year, followed by a gradual weakening and dissipation of El Nino by the middle of 2016. El Nino is important because it drives weather patterns around the world. So far, this El Nino has led to drier than average conditions around Central America and the Caribbean and the Horn of Africa. It has also disrupted the Indian monsoon and led to drier conditions in Southeast Asia and Indonesia. Looking ahead, this map shows forecast conditions for October 2015 to March 2016. As you can see, western and southern areas of North America will be wetter than average, while drier than average conditions are expected over areas of southern Canada and northern USA. Central America, the Caribbean, and northern South America will be drier than average. Abundant rains are forecast for the important agricultural areas of southern Brazil, northeast Argentina, and Uruguay. Likewise, a swath of wetter than average conditions is forecast for Central Africa, through the Horn of Africa, across the Arabian Peninsula, and into Central Asia. However, drought is expected across Southern Africa and similarly drier than usual conditions are forecast to continue in Southeast Asia. As mentioned earlier, another driver of global weather patterns is La Nina. In the last El Nino of comparable magnitude, 1997-1998, a rapid transition to La Nina conditions occurred. The La Nina events are seen in this graphic as the blue downward spikes. Some observers speculate that this may happen again. This would be unfavorable for the Horn of Africa because La Nina is quite consistently associated with drought in the Eastern Horn. Thank you, Jim. Hello, I'm Chris Hilbrenner, the Senior Food Security Advisor at FuseNet. I'll be discussing how we expect El Nino to affect food security. Before we get started, FuseNet uses IPC 2.0, the Integrated Food Security Phase Classification, to describe acute food security outcomes. This five-level scale is widely used by food security analysts and humanitarian assistance actors around the globe. According to the IPC, when an area reaches phases 3, 4, or 5, crisis, emergency, or famine, urgent humanitarian assistance is required. Let's start with a global overview. From October 2015 to September 2016, FuseNet projects that roughly 38 million people will be in need of emergency food assistance in the countries FuseNet covers. This covers most of the food security hotspots, but not all. For example, this does not cover Syria. This is a roughly 30% increase over our estimate for last year. The countries colored on this map are where we expect emergency food assistance needs in 2016, and in the country shaded in blue, about half of the countries, El Nino's impacts on climate are a primary driver. This El Nino and the needs it is creating are above and beyond a variety of other serious food security emergencies that are happening. Prior to the El Nino, our three countries of greatest concern were Nigeria, South Sudan, and Yemen. 
This El Nino is creating needs in a host of other areas. Central America and the Caribbean. As Jim mentioned, during the Primera season, there was a very severe drought. By some measures, the most severe drought in the last 35 years. Across the five countries Fusenet covers, subsistence farmers lost between 50 and 100 percent of both their maize and their bean crop. These large-scale losses were not limited to these subsistence farmers. On a national level, countries in Central America lost 20 to 30 percent of their Primera maize harvest, a significant impact. El Nino has also had a significant impact on the demand for labor. The dryness tends to limit the spread of coffee rust, which is good. On the other hand, it tends to limit the coffee yields. We expect these two factors to cancel each other out and have another year of below average coffee labor income, which is an important source of income for poor households in the region. Other cash crops that poor households harvest, like sugarcane, spices, and rubber, are also likely to be negatively affected by the dryness. In terms of food prices, prices for maize and beans are above last year and above average across the five countries that we cover. We anticipate that 2.5 to 3 million people will be in phase three or higher in 2016, with the majority of those populations in Guatemala and Haiti. This level of need in Central America is quite atypical. East Africa. As Jim pointed out, one classic signature of El Nino is dryness in the northern part of Ethiopia during the June to September period, which is the main season in Ethiopia. This map shows an estimate of soil moisture based on a model run for FuseNet by NASA. The model not only looks at rainfall, it's also taking other sources of information into account to estimate soil moisture, which is important for crop and fodder growth. The dark areas are showing soil moisture that is the worst in 30 years or more, since 1981 to be specific, when data was first recorded. These remotely sensed analyses have been confirmed by recent field assessments. Livestock are in very poor condition, as are crops. We estimate that 7 to 8 million people will require emergency food assistance at the peak of the 2016 lean season, between July and September. That would make Ethiopia the most food insecure country in the world, surpassing Yemen. I will note, however, that while food security outcomes are expected to be severe, early warning, improved safety nets, and the absence of significant conflict will prevent the level of mortality that followed droughts during the mid-1980s. This area of Sudan that is adjacent to northern Ethiopia also had a very poor start to the season, and we expect production to be below average. Cash crop production in Sudan has also been significantly affected. The mitigating factor is that unlike during the 2011-12 drought, there has been more replanting this year, so we don't expect losses to be quite as large as they were during that year. Also, because of a variety of economic issues that constrained government exports last year, government cereal stocks are large, and these are likely to mitigate some of the price impact of this year's poor production. In the Horn, as Jim mentioned, we are expecting very heavy rainfall during the October to December season, and this will increase the risk of flooding. On this map, the greens and blues signify atypically heavy rainfall. The red diamonds are places where we've already gotten reports of localized flooding. While the impacts on populations directly affected by flooding can be quite severe, the net impacts on food security of the heavy rainfall are expected to be positive, particularly in relation to food production in southern Somalia. Southern Africa. This map shows areas that experienced poor 2014-15 crop production and that also have enhanced chances of below average rainfall during this year's main season. While there does not appear to be a great risk of acute food insecurity in South Africa itself, it is the grain basket of the region. And if they have a second consecutive poor year of crop production, it will likely have important implications for regional cereal supply. Malawi is another area of concern because we already expect 2.5 million people will be in phase three or higher during the January to March 2016 lean season. If Malawi has another poor season, food security could deteriorate further. There is also an increased likelihood of dryness in southern Madagascar and southern Mozambique, two other countries who already have atypically high levels of food insecurity this year. Central Asia is likely to have a wetter than usual winter as a result of the El Nino. Overall, this is positive news for crop production and food security, but it does increase the risk of localized flooding and landslides during the spring. West Africa is one region we cover where El Nino is not expected to have significant impacts on food security. 
Finally, despite serious implications on food security in a variety of places, we do not expect a major impact on global food supplies, primarily because global stocks of maize, wheat, and rice are so large, and because international prices for these commodities are below average. To sum up, here are the key messages on El Nino. First, we have a very strong El Nino and anticipate it will continue three to six months into 2016. A transition to a La Nina is possible. Second, we expect 38 million people will require emergency food assistance in the coming year, a 30% increase from last year. This does not include every place with food insecure populations. For example, FuseNet does not cover Syria. In half of the countries in need, El Nino is a primary driver of the food insecurity. Third, this briefing has focused on the food security impacts of El Nino. However, it's important to note that El Nino is likely to also impact a variety of other sectors, including health, water, and sanitation. Thank you for listening, and remember to subscribe to our updates via email and follow us on Twitter and Facebook to get all of the most up-to-date information on food security.